Hello, this is Carrie from the Dark Side of the Library podcast. Of course, I'm here with my favorite creepy co-host, Katie. Woohoo! This is our presentation to you of the interesting, dark, and spooky young adult reads coming out September 2023. And we haven't read any of these yet because they're not out yet. If you're interested in checking out some of these books and learning more about them and or shopping for them, we have affiliate links over in our show notes to help you take a look. So today, Katie's going to start us off with the first dark YA book of the day. Yeah, this one is a new Kendari Blake book. It is Champion of Fate. It's from the Hero Maker series. So it's book one. And this came out September 19th. Kendari Blake has done a lot of dark fantasy novels, and I haven't seen them around lately. So I'm excited to see what their new duology is going to be about. This is about a character named Arrestine. Oh, no, Arrestine is an order of mythical female warriors. Well, already I'm in. Though heroes might be immortalized in legends, it's the Arrestine who guide their paths to victory. They are the hero makers. Raised by the order after being orphaned, Reed, our main character, grew up surrounded by her future sisters in arms and the incredible stories of their quests. She has been counting the days until her initiation, and now one final test stands in her way, shepherding her first hero to glory on the battlefield. Succeed, and her place in the order is secured. Fail, and she'll be cast out of the only home she's ever known. And oh. I'm assuming somebody might die if she fails. <laughs> uh, but Reed didn't count on Hestian, her assigned hero, being both infuriating and intriguing. When their strategic alliance turns into something more, it forces Reed to question the cost of becoming a Rastine. As battle looms and fate hangs in the balance, Reed must make an impossible choice, her hero or her order. So it doesn't sound terribly dark, but maybe there's some dark bits in there that are hiding. I know Kendari Blake has done a ton of dark reads. This is Champion of Fate, a part of the Hero Maker series. My first book today is called The Changing Man. It's by Tommy Oya McKindy. I hope I said that right. I apologize if I didn't. Comes out September 26th. A teenage girl is going to be pulled into investigating the truth behind her new boarding school's decades-old legend. Oh, I love boarding school books. If it was left to her, Ifa Adebola wouldn't be starting at Nithercott School, because despite her being in the Urban Achievers Scholarship Program, her parents can barely afford the tuition. No matter who is trying to be friends with her, like her classmate Bijal, or how much the prestigious boarding school tries to pull her in, Aoife is determined not to get caught up in any of it. But when another student, Malika, begins acting strange, Aoife can't help but wonder if there's any more, anything else going on more at Nithercott than she realizes. Could there be any truth to the school's decades-old legend of the changing man? Is there any connection to the missing older brother of her classmate, Ben? This sounds very interesting. The publisher is Faywell and Friends. It comes out September 26th. It's The Changing Man. My next book is The Dark Lord's Daughter. This came out September 5th. It's by Patricia C. Reed. And this is for aging, uh, reading ages 8 through 12. This is 368 pages of awesome fun. Uh, so this is the author of Dealing with Dragons. Okay, that's where I recognize that name from. All right. So Kayla is just an ordinary girl, or so she thinks, when a day at the state fair is interrupted by the news that she's the daughter of the, quote, Dark Lord. She and her family are quickly whisked to another world, one that's chock full of magic but lacking in technology. As her family encounters fantastical creatures in place of their earthly gadgets, Kayla must prepare for the unpreparable meeting her father, the Dark Lord himself, for the very first time. All Kayla wants is just to go home, but she must learn magic to do that. The catch? Oh, there's more? For the Dark Lord's daughter, the road to mastering magic is filled with evil traditions. As she ventures closer to her father, Kayla must decide whether to accept her birthright, is she destined for darkness, 
or can she become a new kind of dark lady? This sounds very cute. This is called The Dark Lord's Daughter. This is by Patricia C. Reed. And I just had to delete a self-published book that snuck into our notes because we don't cover any self-published books. So if Katie, if you wouldn't mind, what's your next book? Sure. My next book is Find Him Where You Left Him Dead. Well, this is a teen book. This got, s oh yes, we're in teens. I don't know why I thought we weren't in teens. This is we, YA. <laughs> we've been recording a lot of podcasts lately. We yes. <laughs> uh, so this comes out September 26th. This has a really interesting cover. Uh, so when you do look over on YouTube or if you look at our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com, click on Find Him Where You Left Him Dead. It'll be a really interesting cover. This is by Kristen Simmons. Four years ago, five kids started a game, and not all of them survived. Now, at the end of their senior year of high school, the survivors, Owen, Madeline, Emerson, and Dax, have reunited for one strange and terrible reason. They've been summoned by the ghost of Ian, the friend they left for dead. Oh. Oh. Together, they return to the place where their friendship ended with one goal. Find Ian and bring him home. So they restart the deadly game they never finished, an innocent card matching challenge called Maido, a game without instructions. I wonder if this is a real game, Maido. As soon as they begin, they're dragged out of their reality and into an eerie hellscape of Japanese underworlds. Well, that's terrifying. More horrifying than even the darkest folk tales that Owen's grandmother told them told him. There, they, may, they meet Shinigami, an old wise woman who explains the rules. They have one night to complete seven challenges, or they'll all be stuck in this world forever. Once inseparable, the survivors now can't stand each other, but the challenges demand they work together. Think quickly and make sacrifices. Blood, clothes, secrets, memories, and worse. And once again, not everyone will make it out alive. This is published by Tortin. This is Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons. My next book is by Wednesday Books, one of our favorite YA publishers. This is The Forest Grimm, spelled G-R-I-M-M. -M. It comes out September 29 by Catherine Purdy. It's meant for grade level 7 to 9. It's a spellbinding romanticy. Oh. The Midnight Forest, the Fanged Creature, two fortune-telling cards that spell an untimely death for 17-year-old Clara. Despite the ever-present warning from her fortune-teller grandmother, Clara embarks on a dangerous journey into the deadly forest grim to procure a magical book, the Book of Fortunes. It has the power to reverse the curse on her village and save her mother. Years ago, when the villagers whispered their deepest desires to the book, its pages revealed how to obtain them. Ooh, I'm in. All was well until someone used the book for an evil purpose. There's always that one person that messes it up for the whole village. Absolutely. Don't be that person. <laughs> but they maybe had their reasons. They used the book for an evil purpose to kill another person. Maybe oh, that yeah. person needed killing. I don't know. I'm not judging. <laughs> But afterward, the branches of the forest Grimm snatched the book away, the well water in Grimm's hollow turned rancid, ew, and the crops died from disease. Oh. The villagers tried to make amends with the forest, but every time someone crossed its border, they never returned. Well, I'm kind of rooting for the forest. Good for you. So Clara has no alternative left. She and her close friend Axel, who is fated never to be with her, Oh. have set their minds to defying fate and daring to accomplish what no one else has been able to before. But the forest is alive with dark, deadly twists on our, some of our most no well-known fairy tales, and it has a mind of its own. This sounds so good! Yeah, it does. This is The Forest Grim by Catherine Purdy. My next book is House of Ash and Bone. This, or this came out September 5th, and it's by Jewel, Joel A. Sutherland. This is like The Haunted meets House of Salt and Sorrows, and it's a YA book. We have 17-year-old Josephine Jagger. She's a talented writer with special abilities that she doesn't fully understand. 
Over the years, she has developed methods to cope with the voices she hears in her head, but the old house her family has inherited in Vermont makes Josephine question what's real and what's not more than anything she's ever encountered before. It's filled with shadows and whispers and the unshakable feeling of being watched. Josephine then catches her first glimpse of a shadowy woman with long hair, pale skin, an impossibly wide smile, and hollow pits for eyes. Oh, her name is Dorcas, <laughs> the ghost of a witch who died 300 years ago. She has summoned the family to Vermont to ensnare them, then consume them in order to rise from the grave and live again. This sounds interesting, and I know Joel A. Sutherland is a very good horror author. This is House of Ash and Bone. My next book is A Hundred Vicious Turns. It's the Broken Tower book number one in an upcoming series. It's by Lee Page O'Brien, and Harry N. Abrams is the very distinguished publisher. So what is this about? The heir to an arcane bloodline must outwit their ambitious rival to stop a ruthless magical adversary. Rat Evans, non-binary heir to one of the oldest magical bloodlines in New York, doesn't cast spells anymore. For as long as Rat can remember, they've been surrounded by doorways that nobody else sees hmm. and corridors that aren't on any map. Then one day they opened a passage and found a broken tower in a field of weeds and something followed them back. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> I'm in. When Rat is accepted into Bellamy Arts, all they want is a place to hide and to make sure they never open another passageway again. But when the only other person who knows what really happened last year, Harker Blakely, the dangerously gifted trans boy who used to be Rat's closest friend, turns up on campus, Rat begins to realize that Bellamy Arts not, might not be as safe as they thought and the tower might not be through with them yet. This sounds really good. It's A Hundred Vicious Turns, The Broken Tower, book one, by Lee Page O'Brien. My next book is If I Have to Be Haunted. This is by Miranda Sun, and it comes out September 26th. Kara Tang doesn't want to be haunted. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Look. The dead have issues, and Kara has enough of her own. Her overbearing mother insists she be the, quote, perfect Chinese-American daughter, which means surpassing or suppressing her ghost-speaking powers, and she keeps getting into fights with Zacharias Colson, the local golden boy whose smirk makes her want to set things on fire. <laughs> I know exactly what that feels like. Ah. Then she stumbles upon Zack's dead body in the woods. Oh. He's even more infuriating as a ghost. <laughs> but Kara's the only one who can see him and save him. Agreeing to resurrect him puts her at odds with her mother, draws her into a dangerous liminal world of monsters and magic, and worse, leaves her stuck with Zack. Yet, as she and Zack grow closer, forced to depend on each other to survive, Kara finds the most terrifying thing is that she might not hate him so much after all. Maybe this is why her mother warned her about ghosts. <laughs> oh, boys. Can you imagine the conversation? Young lady, don't you dare set foot outside of this house, and especially don't you dare reanimate that corpse. <laughs> I hope that's what the line is in there. Oh, geez. This is called If I Have to Be Haunted. This is by Miranda Sun. My next book is The Library of Shadows, one of the most gothic book titles ever. It came out in September 5. It's by Rachel Moore. It's for reading age 13 years and up. It's set at Radcliffe Prep, the third most haunted school in the country, where a student disappearance isn't uncommon. And no one dares stay in the library after dark. Oh, no fear. Library after dark is one of my favorite places to be. Yay! And Esti Logano enrolls with the hopes of finding her dead father. Not literally, of course. She doesn't believe in ghosts. Going to her dad's school just seems like her best hope at figuring out who he was. Except I thought Radcliffe was in school for women. But this must be Radcliffe prep. Anyway, I'm confused. So, Esti meets Mateo, who is maybe... Probably, definitely, a real ghost, and an annoying one at that. 
I'm starting to see a little pattern in the books coming out lately. (laughs) Annoying ghosts that are probably cute. (laughs) When Mateo frames Esty for the theft of a rare book from the library's secret spire. How come my library doesn't have a secret spire? Oh, maybe it does and I don't know about it yet. Anyway, he vanishes. Esty's going to have to track him down or risk being expelled and leaving Radcliffe early just like her father did. Except following her father's footsteps might be more dangerous than Esty ever anticipated. As she investigates the library with its secret passageways, hidden tunnels, and haunted halls, she learns that the student disappearances aren't just myth. And if she isn't careful, she'll be next. I totally want to read this. It's The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. That sounds fun. And I Mm. hope you do have a spire in your library. (laughs) (laughs) It's only a one uh, story library that I know of. Uh, Right. It might lead down to like this epic Beauty and the Beast library. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So my next book is Nightbreaker. This came out September 19 and it's by Coco Ma. This is a dystopian novel. So I'm very excited. Fifteen years ago, the vanishing thrust Manhattan into darkness, forever changing the city that never sleeps. By day, resilient New Yorkers have adapted, clinging to the vestiges of their cosmopolitan lives. By night, well, you never go out at night unless you, if you have a death wish. Or unless you're Ray Reynolds. Ray attends an exclusive New York prep school. But unlike her classmates, she welcomes Nightfall. That's when she can secretly hunt Deathlings, the deadly creatures that have prowled Manhattan subway tunnels and blood-soaked streets since The Vanishing. After they brutally slaughtered her parents years ago, Ray is desperate for vengeance. To get it, Ray must qualify for and win the tournament, a competition to join the ranks of the city's legendary Deathling Hunters. Ray's nightly pursuit should give her an advantage, but the other competitors are fierce, and in some cases, familiar. Enter Kieran Cross, Ray's most infuriating rival and ex-boyfriend. I'm really getting a theme here. (laughs) I know, all these boys are so annoying. I mean, they're not wrong. (laughs) We love them anyway. So as the tournament progresses and the cutthroat competition escalates, everything Ray believed about who she can trust is called into question. Soon enough, she's caught in the crosshairs of the elite who want to keep the city's ruling class in power, as well as those who will stop at nothing to bring it down. Because sometimes it's not the monsters waiting in the dark you should fear. It's the ones who dare to walk in the light. This sounds really fun. It actually is giving me, um, oh my gosh, I just lost it. The Hunger Games vibes a little Mm. bit. Like dystopian, some weird, you know, rich versus poor or people fighting. And, you know, it sounds fun. This is Nightbreaker by Coco Ma. My next book is Prayer for Vengeance. It comes out September 19. It's by Leanne Schwartz. Page Street YA is the publisher. Grade levels 10 to 12. An orphan sets out to find the truth within a warped religion, and he turns his poetry into prayer. Okay, that's cool, but the prayer awakens a cursed girl that's hungry for revenge. Oops. (laughs) Careful with that poetry. Careful with your praying. (laughs) Centuries after a miracle vanquished Trestato's monsters and turned the soldiers fighting them to stone, Milo lovingly tends to the statues of those who protected the city. Raised with devout Templars and scholars, autistic temple ward Milo wants nothing more than to be accepted into their ranks. When his prayers admiring her heroic sacrifice accidentally free Gia from stone, (gasps) she wakes with a fury to kill the man Milo owes his life to, Primo Sanct Ennio. This sounds like a video game, actually. Gia claims that the immortal holy leader Milo lives to serve is the same man who betrayed her and transformed her into a statue. And what Milo always believed was a miracle was actually a curse that Gia will stop at nothing to break. Well, you know, she has the right. But then even if she has to kill his followers to do it, and even if she has to kill the boy who woke her, well, you know, it's good to to be grateful sometimes, but Mm. I think I'm going to... Skip it because the world building is a little chaotic. 
But that's Prayer for Vengeance by Leanne Schwartz, if you want to check it out. My next book is The Scarlet Veil, and it is a vampire romance. Dark and thrilling, of course, because it's vampire. And it's 640 pages. Whoa! Yeah, uh, it's published by Harper Teen. Celie Tremblay has always been a good girl, kind and beautiful, a daughter of whom every parent would be proud. Oh, what a little (laughs) goody-goody. She surprises the entire kingdom when she defies tradition to become the first huntswoman, including her new captain and fiancé, Jean-Luc, who rules the huntsman with an iron fist. He isn't the only one concerned for Celie's safety, however. Though her friends try to protect her from the horrors of her past, mysterious whispers still haunt her, and a new evil is rising in Belterra, leaving bodies in its wake, each one drained of blood. Determined to prove herself in her new role, Celie tracks the killer to the lair of Les Eternelles, I can't French, I'm sorry. Ancient creatures only spoken about in nursery rhymes and catches the attention of their king, a monster who hides his plans for her for her behind beautiful words and sharp smiles. Now Celie has new reason to fear the dark because the closer he gets, the more tempted she feels to give in to his dark hunger and <laughs> her own. This is such a romance vampire book. Like, 100%. Love it. So if you, uh, lo- well, if your kids, maybe, or teens love Sarah J. Mass, or if you love Sarah J. Mass, it's very similar vibe. Uh, so this is The Scarlet Veil vale by Shelby Mahurin. My next book is A Study in Drowning. It's by Mm. Ava Reed, and that name sounds familiar, so I'm going to look it up unless you remember. Oh, The Wolf and the Woodsman and Juniper and Thorn. Yes. Yeah. So this comes out September 19. Effie Sayer has always believed in fairy tales. Haunted by visions of the fairy king since childhood, she's had no choice. Her tattered copy of Angorod, Emerson's Emrys Murden's epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king, then destroys him, is the only thing keeping her afloat. Mm. So when Murden's family announces a contest to redesign the late author's estate, Effie feels certain it's her destiny. But musty, decrepit Hyrath Manor is an impossible task, and its residents are far from welcoming, including Preston Haluri, a staunchy young literature scholar determined to expose Murden as a fraud. As the two rivals, again an annoying boy, piece together clues about Murden's legacy, dark forces both mortal and magical conspire against them. This is described as part historical fantasy, part rivals to lovers romance, yet again, part (laughs) gothic mystery, and it has a haunting dreamlike atmosphere. The publisher is Harper Teen. The book is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. My next book is There's No Way I'd Die First. This comes out September 5th, and it's by Lisa Springer. 17-year-old Noelle Lane knows horror. Every trope, every warning, every survival tactic. She even leads a successful movie club dedicated to horror. Who better to throw the ultimate, most exclusive Halloween party on all of Long Island? (laughs) With some of the top influencers in her school on the guest list, including gorgeous sing- singer and songwriter Archer Mitchell, her popularity is bound to spike. She could really use a social boost for an upcoming brand expansion. Nothing is going to ruin this party. Except maybe the low-budget it clown she hired for a stirring round of tag. Oh, what a good friend she is. I- <laughs> He axes one of her classmates. Oh, rude. From the, <laughs> from the looks of his devilish grin and bag full of killer tricks, he's just getting started. A murderous clown is out for blood, but Noelle has been waiting her entire life to prove that she is a final girl. Why would you want that for yourself? I guess don't let your dreams become dreams. Oh, this is... There's No Way I Die First. This is by Lisa Springer. My final book today is What Stalks Among Us 
It comes out September 12th by Sarah Hollowell, who's also the author of A Dark and Starless Forest. It's a deliriously creepy YA speculative thriller about two best friends trapped in a corn maze with corpses that look just like them. (laughs) That's horrible. Now let's see if the best friends, who are a boy and a girl, let's see if the boy is annoying and becomes a ghost in this one. Oh my god. (laughs) Best friends, high school seniors Sadie and Logan make their first mistake when they ditch their end-of-year field trip to the amusement park in favor of exploring some old forgotten back roads. Okay, I would never do this because if you told me amusement park, I hate roller coasters, but I love cotton candy and popcorn, so I would be going to the amusement park. (laughs) The last thing they expected to come across is a giant abandoned corn maze. But with a whole day of playing, and there's a little typo in this publisher's blurb, it says playing hooking. I think they mean hooky. Clarion books, you should know better. Anyway, mistakes happen. They make their second mistake, or perhaps their third or their fourth, because Sadie and Logan have definitely entered this maze before and again before that. When they stumble on the corpses in the maze, identical to them in every way, if you can ignore the stab and gunshot wounds, (laughs) from their clothes to their hidden scars to their dyed hair to that one missing tooth, they quickly realize they've not only entered this maze before, they've died in it too. And no matter what they try, they can't figure out what or who is hunting them. It's an unnerving, clever, and atmospheric book. It's called What Stalks Among Us by Sarah Hollowell. Just the idea is really creepy, and I don't like it. (laughs) No, I don't think I can handle it. (laughs) But I might read it. My next book is one I kind of have to pick up because it feels kind of scream queeny. It's called Your Lonely Nights Are Over. This is by Adam Sass, and it came out September 12th. Apparently, it's Scream meets Clueless, and I love <laughs> both of those movies. So oh, I am, and it's it's about uh, two gay teen BFFs find their friendship tested when a serial killer starts targeting their school's queer club. So Deary and Cole are inseparable, unlikable, and in bad luck for them, totally unbelievable. From the day they met, Deary and Cole have been two against the world but whenever something bad happens at stone grove high school they get blamed why they're beautiful flirtatious dangerously clever queen bees how dare they i know and they're always ready to call out their fellow students but they've never faced a bigger threat than surviving senior year when mr sandman a famous never caught serial killer emerges from a long retirement and his hunting ground is their school queer club. As evidence and bodies begin piling up and suspicion points at Deary and Cole, they will need to do whatever it takes to unmask the real killer before they and the rest of the queer club are taken down. But they're not getting away from the killer without a fight. (laughs) Along the way, they must confront dark truths hidden beneath the surface of their small desert community. When the world is stacked against them and every flop they know is a suspect, can Deary and Cole stop Mr. Sandman's rampage? Or will their lonely nights soon be over? This is called Your Lonely Nights Are Over. (laughs) This is... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is by Adam Sass. And that concludes our list of dark YA books coming out for September of 2023. Hopefully that will hold you over until Halloween season in October. And of course, dark, spooky, wintry nights. I'm very excited for this season. So uh, make sure to follow us on our socials at Dark Side of the Library and to check our Amazon shop out at amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library for more spooky stuff. We like to record or publish every Wednesday and Friday, so make sure to check us out then. And to pass Dark Side of the Library on to your loved ones, let other people know about our podcast. It really helps us out. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you and have a creeptastic rest of your week.